Alessio Rossi is a Master of Science in Sports Sciences uh, from University of Milan and now he works at the Department of Computer Sciences in the University of Pisa and his work is mostly into physiological response analysis uh, in sports and health, including injuries, sleep and, and also well-being. Um, so Alessio, the screen's yours. Go for it. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, today I would like to present uh, um, some um, example of uh, how applied machine learning tools to uh, predict injuries by using uh, a GPS training data. So I would like to start with an example. All of you remember uh, Cavani uh, that in the um, the quarter final of, of Russia 2018 made it a beautiful goal, uh, permitting at Uruguay to win against Portugal. Uh, but at the end of this match, Cavani got injured after a sprint. Uh, then in the next match, he could uh, not able to play, and uh, the France wins against Uruguay. Uruguay. So, um, if Cavani had played, uh, could uh, Uruguay uh, have more chance to win against France? We will never know, but have all the, the main players in our teams uh, could give us more chance to win a match. Another reason why it's very important to predict uh, and prevent injuries is the cost related to injuries. Um, it was estimated that in one season in the Liga, uh, the, the football teams spend uh, at least 200 million of euros, uh, resulting in absentees of their players of about 60% uh, during the training and matches. A big question of uh, this uh, talk is, uh, it's possible to predict soft tissue injuries by using GPS training data, so the workload data. Uh, Gabet, in his previous um, work, uh, say that any illness related to any load are commonly viewed as preventable. So, uh, we record the data uh, from GPS, from the Italian football team for an entire season. So we extract uh, the, uh, the trace of each um, match and uh, uh, each training. And we extract some features that describe the training workload performed by each players uh, during uh, matches uh, and um, and training. So we extract cinematic features such as uh, high speed running distance uh, and total distance, metabolic features such as uh, uh, metabolic distance or high metabolic load distance, and other uh, features uh, that describe the stress in, uh, perform, um, perceived by the players uh, due to the effort made during training and uh, trainings and matches. Uh, so to, um, to have uh, a good uh, algorithm method to predict injuries, we need math. Uh, so ma uh, we need an algorithm that is memorized, so they have some uh, that take in consideration the, the history of the player, so previous injuries or the uh, last uh, training overload performed for, for the players. Uh, it's important it is accurate, so uh, we cannot um, have a model low accurate because if you stop a player, it's a cost for a, a football team. Uh, and if not, we have not reason to stop it, uh, it's uh, a, a waste of time. So uh, it could be transparent because we have uh, to interpret this model uh, to um, to have insights for the reason why these players will get injured or not. And uh, it, had, it had to be uh, holistic because we have to have a complete overview. It, it will be multidimensional because uh, football players uh, and the game is multidimensional. And it's not, we will not consider only one features to predict injuries uh, or to predict some features, some, some performance. So the first method that we would like to present is uh, the, uh, have only one characteristic. It is only transparent. So uh, this problem. is the method uh, already presented oh. by the previous um, uh, speakers. Uh, that is the uh, Gabbett method. This is the acute chronic workload ratio. This is the ratio between the uh, last past six days uh, against the last past 27 days. So values higher than one indicates that uh, 
uh, the players perform higher effort than the one they are used uh, to. And uh, values lower than one indicate under training. So perform lower training uh, than uh, the, uh, the players are used normally. Uh, Agabet say that any, uh, any times we have uh, values higher than 1.5 to the players at high risk of injury. So we uh, tested uh, this model on our, uh, on our data sets uh, and uh, we asserted that any time that features, uh, in uh, this case, the best features uh, to do this uh, uh, approach to predict injuries was high speed running distance. So we perform it on high speed running distance. Uh, and every time we see that high speed running distance, as you were of high speed running distance as is higher than 1.5, we say that the, the, that players will get injured in next, next days. And we detect that uh, is very, very low accurate because uh, it produces 96% of false alarm. So this method could be used as an indicator of training overload and not as an injury forecaster. So uh, this method obviously uh, produces a high number of, uh, of peak during the seasons, uh, induced by the uh, short training periodization. Uh, for example, uh, we, mm, this is the mean of the uh, in-season short, uh, short term periodization that, uh, um, and we can see that high training overload is detected in the day uh, long before the match uh, and uh, in match days and in the day close to the match uh, we have a low training overload. So if we perform this ratio we, we detect that high uh, as if were in the day uh, long before to the match but is induced by the, the, the balance between training overload and recovery and not for the risk, 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 risk of injuries. Uh, another reason is the, that this model is not usable for uh, training prediction is that uh, we uh, is monodimensional. So uh, if you consider one features, uh, we could have a, a, a values of CWARE, but if you consider another features, we could have different level of uh, axiware. So, uh, for example, in dot speed, uh, we have higher values on match states minus three, minus three uh, while in uh, acceleration we have on uh, match, match days minus four. So, if you compare the two axiware, it's, it's different. And we don't know which is the best one to evaluate to predict injuries. This model uh, could be uh, uh, the problem of this model is that is monodimensional and uh, show a lot of false alarms. Uh, is only index and not uh, a per injury for a caster. It is not personalizable because it's, uh, we fit uh, we set a specific threshold where a pl a players uh, at high risk or low risk of injuries. So uh, different players could, could uh, uh, need a different uh, threshold uh, to. Indicate that these players will get injured or not. So the second method that I would like to present has two of these uh, characteristics: is a transparent of and holistic. For you, uh, all of you know the, uh, what is the rate of precision insertion. So it's the a values of internal workload. Uh, I accept that this could be considered uh, holistic because we found a very straight correlation between the external training load and internal one. So we, uh, we try to predict uh, by machine learning approaches uh, the internal core load by using all the features that we have at disposition from our training load for our training. So uh, we, uh, we, say, uh, we uh, computed all of these features as acute features, uh, that is the ratio the, of the last past, uh, the, ratio, the, the, the mean of the last past uh, week, the daily features, that features of, uh, that perform today, and the XUR features. Uh, we detected that the internal load are extremely affected by the acute feature, so the, the effort performed in the last week, uh, little uh, lower by the daily features, and then for the similar features. The prediction uh, of this model uh, uh, is extremely high, so we have a, uh, a correlation close to 0.9, so we can, uh, the, we can explain the 80% of, uh, of the variance. 
the, the, the rest of the virus we, um, we suspected uh, that could be related to injury. So we detected that the players overestimate um, the uh, training overload uh, when uh, the, 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 the training is low, uh, while uh, underestimate when it's very high. So we, we try to transform this, uh, this, this idea uh, in, uh, in an injury for a caster. And we, uh, we set a, a threshold that is uh, above 1.5 of the difference between uh, trend, um, RP uh, observed and predicted. Uh, we say that with these players will get injured. So we perform this, uh, this approach on all of our data sets and we detect a reduction of false alarm, but uh, it's still extremely high. So 91% of false alarms was detected. The reason why there is this difference uh, is, in, uh, is the different is the internal uh, variability of each player. So each player perform uh, uh, feel uh, the effort in different way, and uh, one big reason is the distance to the uh, training um, to the to the matches. Uh, because the players overestimate the effort in the day long before the match, while uh, underestimate in the day close to the match or in match days. The third mo model is uh, they are at three of the four characteristics that uh, made a beautiful, a, a perfect uh, injury for a caster. It's accurate, it's transparent, and it's also holistic. Now if, uh, we try, uh, we applied a machine learning approach uh, to uh, predict injuries. So we give uh, as an input of this model all the features we have at disposition. So training workload features, uh, extracting from the GPS, and also uh, other contextual features uh, such as previous injuries uh, or uh, the mood of the players uh, or the, some individual characteristics. So the model make some inference about uh, uh, this data in order to detect uh, uh, to detect injuries. Uh, we uh, give at the uh, at the model uh, also a sort of pa of past trainings, uh, providing yeah, features yeah. such as AWR, uh, AWR, uh, that is the exponential weight moving yeah. average of the past seven days. MSWare, this is a, a monotony of the past no, month. Not uh, doing the and, uh, I, I don't consider this as the memory of the past because uh, is the aggregate uh, values that um, could lose some information, some important information on, uh, to the past uh, training workloads uh, because we lose some pattern that uh, we will detect with. Uh, some sophisticated uh, uh, machine learning approaches. Mm, so uh, we tested our model uh, as uh, we can do if uh, we are in a real uh, situation. So uh, we have the data until now, so we can train the model until now and then we predict uh, the uh, injuries on the next training day. Uh, in order to, uh, to avoid uh, all uh, possible overfitting uh, of our model. Uh, the, prob uh, the big problem in, data in injury data sets is that extremely imbalanced. So uh, this is a, a huge problem for machine learning to learn pattern into uh, the training set and predict some uh, insights of the, 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 the test sets. So uh, we oversampled by a statistical approach called Adasin. Uh, the, uh, the minority class, in this case, is injury class. Uh, and uh, in order to amplify, uh, to uh, increase the number of examples that the, play, uh, the algorithm could learn about. Uh, then uh, we perform a recursive future elimination uh, from, uh, by, with cross validation in order to reduce the dimension of the data set and have uh, some few, many features, uh, only few, uh, that permit us to predict injuries, the main important features. Uh, and then we train our model uh, on train set to predict in the next week. 
So we find a good result. So increase the uh, ability of uh, machine uh, of um, of previous uh, uh, models from uh, 0.5 to 6, 0.60. Uh, so uh, it's an increase of more than 50%. Uh, so in these graphs, we can see that in the y-axis, so we have the, the weak. In y-axis, F1 score, this is the values of the accuracy uh, in machine learning. Uh, on the top of the of the plots, we have a red and black cross. The red cross is the uh, injuries that we are not able to detect with our model. And the red cross is the, the detected one. Uh, as the season go by, uh, we are more and more able to detect injuries. So, uh, more the example that uh, the, the algorithm have, more is able to uh, detect injuries. Uh, so, uh, this is a, a, a high improvement of the, 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 the literature model used to predict injuries. So, this is model is a uh, uh, we choose to use a, um, a model uh, non that not the, the best one that have a higher accuracy, uh, but this is the model more uh, transparent, more able to uh, to be understand when we um, extract the information of uh, of these models. These models um, we uh, create a decision tree. Every time that we train our mod, uh, our algorithm, uh, the, uh, the this. Uh, mm, Decision tree change in accordance to the request of the players and the, the injury risk. So, if they learn some other inf information, the the, um, the model change uh, and uh, improve their their accuracy. So, uh, and from this uh, tree, we can extract some rules. For example, in the, this uh, this is a decision tree of uh, close to the end of the the, the, the seasons. And the most important feature is the previous injuries features that is describe uh, how long the, uh, the players will return up from previous injuries, the uh, high running distance of the past week, and the monotony of the total distance. So we start with an example. This players and the week 12 uh, as they come back from the injuries from a long time, uh, perform high speed runnings very high and with high monotony of a total distance. If I follow the pattern in the decision tree, we can detect that will, these players will not get injured in the next trainings or, ma or matches. Uh, so, another example, this player's players 8 in week 15 uh, is come back from these previous injuries from, from times, a few days, uh, perform high high speed running distance in the last week, and they have a moderate uh, monotony of their um, of their training overload in total distance. In this, uh, in this case, uh, sorry. in this case, uh, if we follow the, follow the path, we could detect that these players will get injured. So uh, this is an ins a very important insight for football trainers and uh, coaches uh, because it can, it, they could change uh, the training uh, periodization, the training schedule, uh, in order to reduce the risk injuries and maximize the effect of the training. So this model is also uh, specialized because we can train this model for different um, teams uh, because different teams have different requests for, for their because the players are different, the trainers are different, the requests from the season are different. Uh, so, uh, we, if you have enough data, we could uh, also train this model uh, uh, for each player because uh, the request uh, from uh, um, Cristiano Ronaldo could be completely different from the one of uh, Lukaku, for example. So, this model is high accura accurate, uh, accurate. Uh, it's, uh, it's required a short training period to be stabilized, it's highly interpretable and is personalizable. So the last model is the uh, have all the characteristics: is memorized, is accurate, is transparent, is and is holistic. So to do that, we give uh, as input of our model uh, a time series of the past months uh, with all the features uh, that describe our training load. So we have a, a screenshot or a, a, a shot of uh, the past uh, week uh, of uh, past month of training. Uh, 
uh, we use uh, a convolutional neural network that is a, a machine learning approach, a neural network approach. Uh, I can use uh, in the for the other. Um, in the other fields to recognize in particular image. So we give an uh, image of the past month uh, and the, the model uh, try to detect some pattern into the, uh, the past uh, training workload, uh, multidimensional training workload, uh, to detect if the uh, players will get injured or not. So uh, we have only the preliminary result, but the accuracy uh, increased uh, uh, increase a lot from the uh, from the easier model uh, such as decision tree, passing from 0.6% of accuracy to an accuracy of, of 74%. But uh, is the model is uh, uh, difficult to be understand. Uh, this is two example of uh, the result provided by the, the algorithm. So we have uh, in the uh, x-axis of these uh, figures, uh, the, the training workload, the day of the trainings. Uh, in x-axis, uh, we have the, uh, all the features. And the spot, uh, the, the model color the spots in accordance to the importance provided by the, the, the model to decide if these players will get injured or not. Uh, so uh, the, two, the two figures from injury one and no injury one is completely different. So uh, the, the model select uh, some features uh, and look at particular part of the season, the, 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 the past month and some particular features to, to decide if this player will get injured or not. So, for example, for the injuries one, we could detect that the, uh, this model uh, detected the, um, is the very important uh, the, what happened in the long before today, the day of the injuries, and the day close to the injuries. So uh, we are working now to uh, provide a easy interpretation of this model. Uh, and for example, we are looking the, uh, in the uh, features selected by the, the, the model uh, and detect uh, uh, patterns into uh, this uh, in particular spot. For example, for high speed standard acceleration for these players, we detect high uh, acceleration in the day long before to, um, one month ago, and uh, I uh, um, acceleration in the one week ago. Uh, so uh, this is a pattern for acceleration, but we have to combine all the pattern for the, all the features that we detected. So um, if you are interested in this, this model, uh, they are published in um, in plus one, the, the first one what is of decision tree, the comparison with uh, with AXIWR, AXIWR uh, model. Uh, and uh, we present the convolutional neural network model in the past uh, symposium for, for Barcelona in the last years, and we can find the papers uh, on their websites. So in conclusion, prediction is better than cure. Thank you. Hi, Alessio. Hmm. Okay. Hi, Alessio. Hi. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can yeah hear. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, I think we have uh, a few questions, and please make yourself comfortable to, to make some questions for Alessio. I will, I will start with I think we should clarify some key points related to prediction because you told some forecasting and prediction. And uh, based on your machine learn um, tools, uh, what you did was to classify athletes into high risk categories. Or was a different thing that you try to forecast because I think there is a different in between forecast and prediction. And maybe when we are talking about risk, I think prediction is uh, based on the literature. Prediction is the ability to classify into high-risk category, for example. So I, I would like your thoughts on that. Okay, uh, so um, there is, uh, I spoke about uh, prediction and forecasting uh, to 
So we don't know, we cannot uh, classify one player uh, in uh, high risk players uh, and another one in low risk players. But the events of the past week or for us uh, months uh, put these uh, players uh, in a situation that uh, have high risk uh, uh, or low risk of injuries. Uh, so uh, the model provides uh, uh, some percentage of uh, probability that uh, the player will get injured or not. So uh, in this case, we said that uh, if uh, the algorithm say that uh, the prediction is higher than 50 per the percent of high the risk of injuries, we say that these players will get injured. But uh, we can set uh, this threshold as we can prefer. Uh, if you would like to improve the precision of our model, uh, we, can, uh, we, can, uh, we can increase this threshold. So we can set, for example, like 60, uh, 70% and uh, probably we can able to, to detect less injuries what with more accuracy, more precision. Uh, so if we are interested in the detect all the injuries uh, with uh, low precision, we can set, reduce this uh, threshold and so we detect all injuries, but uh, we say, see, yes, uh, tomorrow we'll get injuries, but the, the precision, the probability that we'll get injuries is very low. So. Um, I prefer to uh, have high uh, precision and less recall uh, because uh, if I have to stop a player, so we ha I have to be sure that it, with that player have a high, high risk of injuries. Okay, thank you. And uh, the last thing is about um, uh, Alan's co comments because I think I fully agree with him that machine learn will not uh, replace human uh, decision, but I fully understand that machine learning could help us to make better decision and help coaches to do the risk management and do some decision on the pitch. So what do you think about what do you think about it? Do you agree or do you think that we will all be replaced by machines? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, these models, uh, obviously, as you assert, uh, is not uh, uh, not uh, surround so uh, a human because uh, model uh, need to be interpreted. So uh, the model give us an idea of the risk of injuries. So uh, we don't know tomorrow what the players will do. So. Uh, uh, the human, uh, the human uh, have to um, cool, uh, waste time to understand, to look at features, uh, to look at all uh, the pattern into the data set. So if uh, there is a tools that help us to, uh, to interpret that, um, a big data set that we are not able to do, uh, the human can do, uh, is a tool that help and not substitute the, uh, the human. So this is a, a huge mistake that all um, people that don't know very well artificial intelligence do, uh, because things, uh, so, so if uh, the artificial intelligence come in my field, uh, I can be obsolete and no one need me. So it's not true. Uh, is only a help for training and matches to reduce uh, the, the time spent to analyze the data that uh, someone can do for you. So I hope uh, you agree with me and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alessia. Yeah, thank you too. Thank you.